Hi, welcome back. Today we're talking about this perfume right here. This is Muschio Oro by Santa Maria Novella. That is the packaging of it. Let's open it up and have a look. Oh, there you go. That's pretty. So, Santa Maria Novella, they don't write the name of their perfumes on the bottles. I think what they have going right now is that they have one kind of generic bottle for all the perfumes and it comes like this. And the money is really spent on this uh, design back here. And then they just write the name underneath. Now I have a feeling that this is like a sticker type situation where you put it on with the name and then you peel it off and it leaves the writing behind. So uh, what I, from experience, when I have bottles that are like this, this is liable to wear off over time. So you might not be able to see the name of the perfume forever. And it's not written anywhere else. Like it's not written on the bottom or again on the top. And then on the box, there's a sticker that says the type, the name of the perfume. So just, just to know if you end up getting something from Santa Maria Novella, keep the box and keep your bottle in the box because you might not be able to see this, um, the name of this perfume forever. This brand is from Florence, Italy, and it was um, a convent run by Dominican monks. Originally, it was a little bit outside of the city of Florence, and um, they would have a garden, and they would harvest herbs and flowers from the garden, and then make medicines out of them. So medicines being rose water, or mints to settle your stomach. They're also really well known for their um, skin remedies. So like their almond paste hand cream is really famous and um, they were known for that. And that was in the 1200s. And then they sold a lot of their medicines and became really famous for that in the middle ages, especially during the plague. And um, I think after that they got lots of money and they they were able to have the um, the the store the apothecary that they have now and it eventually opened to the public in the 1600s so that people could come in and buy their own medicines they had a whole room that was full of the scented waters and so people would come in with pitchers and bottles and things and they'd be able to fill their own scented waters into them and take them home to use as medicine. And in those times, you know, rose water, that wasn't just something you sprayed on yourself to perfume yourself. It was thought of as being able to kill bacteria and, and heal also. So people would drink it, people would mix their wine with it, people would scent the room with it to try to, in an effort to kind of sanitize everything. And um, yeah, it, it, that was like around the time when they thought that it was the bad smell that was causing the illness to spread. And so they were trying to get rid of the smell not knowing that it was actually the um, the bacteria that was infectious and spreading the illness around, right? So they tried to get rid of the smell, hoping that if they could just make things smell good, then people would stop getting sick. Um, and then the people started wearing masks so that they wouldn't have to smell the things that were bad, thinking if I can't smell it, I won't get sick. But what we know now is that masks actually also help prevent infections from spreading and so that helped to stop um, the plague being spread as much as it did so one of the things at least right also lots of people just died so that also helped stop the spread um okay so that's a little bit of history of santa maria novella the house um they are still you know an apothecary they're known as the oldest one of the oldest pharmacies in the world um, a lot of their uh, scents are still the same formulas that they had back when 
um, they were very popular and well known in the Middle Ages, but of course some of them are new. Um, a lot of their perfumes are eau de colognes, and um, that's something that you should know if you're uh, trying to buy a Santa Maria Novella perfume for yourself. And Muschio Oreo, Oro is in eau de cologne. Everything is made in Italy still, so that's kind of nice. And I do love that the packaging is kind of old world, old school, and they do have their logo on their caps as well. Um, this, you cannot buy Santa Maria Novella in Canada, except for this one place called The Perfume Shop out in Vancouver. Um, even then, they don't have everything, and a lot of the things they do have are uh after shaves like splashes and they don't also have a lot of the older bottles don't have a spray cap or a spray spray top so you would have to buy that separately and you can buy that through Santa Maria Novella and um otherwise this is what it comes like this is just a splash bottle and you would take this little stopper out and replace it with the spray cap I, I presume um, and that's how my bottle came. So I did end up decanting this for myself into a tiny little spray bottle. And I have been carrying this everywhere with me. And I've been reapplying it as often as I want. I do have another Santa Maria Novella perfume. So I will show that to you. This one was brought to me from Florence by someone that follows me and was asked me if I wanted anything which is very kind so let's open this one and this is Melagrano and I asked for a 50 ml bottle again this is an eau de cologne so that's what the box looks like and this one does have a sprayer so I have been spraying directly from from the bottle, I'm just looking at the bottle, the bottom here. Um, yeah, so again, does this say the name of the, yeah, this says Melagrano on it. So this is newer. This one is clearly older and I bought this online um, on eBay. That's where I bought Muscu Oro. It's a blind buy for me, but it was, I think it was a pretty safe blind buy. Um, yeah, this has all the ingredients on it too. So, coumarin is listed and um, other things that they are required to label. So, that's on here as a sticker. And then this has the, this doesn't have a sticker. This has the printing directly on the bottle. They have changed the packaging more recently, literally last week. I feel like they have introduced um, new packaging for their scents. And I believe they are going back to a frosted glass. So they had the frosted glass, then they went to the clear bottles, and then they are reintroducing the frosted glass, I believe. I was literally on their website earlier this week, and on their Instagram I saw that they were talking about that. So this is my bottle of Melagrano, and it does say Melagrano right on top, but I've seen other bottles where it is printed like this and the name is kind of like a sticker on the back. This is a more expensive process because you can't, um, you have to like order these stickers special. I prefer this because this is not going to wear away over time. Whereas I know that this is going to wear away over time. So just something to keep in the back of your mind if you're looking for partial bottles or used bottles and you want to know what you're getting. Um, this is quite beautiful. I will talk about Melagrano another time. I just haven't worn it enough to really talk about it. Oh my gosh, so good. Still my favorite. Melagrano means pomegranate. I don't get any pomegranate from this, just FYI. Um, I know people say that they smell fruits and stuff like that. I really don't. I don't get any pomegranate from this. If you want pomegranate, try smelling Pomegranate Noir by Jo Malone. Excellent pomegranate perfume. Okay, but let's talk about, today we're talking about Muscu Oro. I bought this and then I looked it up afterwards 
and people have basically said that this is a very soapy perfume. Um, there's so many different kinds of soaps that you could think of. Uh, is it Irish Spring? Is it um, like an antibacterial soap? Is it Ivory? Is it Ponds? Is it, uh, what's the other one that we really like? Dove. Dove soap smells really beautiful also. And I think it's a little bit simplistic to say that something smells like soap because originally that soapy smell was a scent that soap makers were trying to copy. So they were trying to copy Chanel Number no. 5 and maybe other perfumes that were really famous at the time because they knew that that's how people wanted to smell. So they were mixing up this, this scent for their soap so that it would replicate Chanel number no. five um, you know and then that became the the classic soapy scent even though that is also a mix of florals and really I feel like there's when there's ylang ylang and jasmine and rose in a formula the ylang really gives it like a fresh minty uplifting kind of um, scent profile that makes you feel kind of more awake and more alive and I love that about it but that I think is quintessential soap this is uh, to me it wasn't really that soapy I'm wearing it today I'm wearing it today but I also sprayed it on paper earlier I don't really think that Muscio Oro is too too soapy however when I sprayed it someone did pass by and said Mm, you smell like soap today. <laughs> it for sure was Muscio Oro. I had literally just reapplied it. Um, so I guess it does smell soapy. And of course my response was, well, what kind of soap? Because this is a very specific kind of soap, if you even want to call it that. Um, this is like a very elevated, people have said it's like a came soap. I've also seen people say that it was like a dial soap. Um, it is a, a, a full bodied rounder. Uh, it's clean, it's floral, but there's like a syrupy warmth with it as well. And I think that that is like a warm soap, warm, clean feeling. Uh, the other scent that I always think about when I think of like a fresh warm shower is Ambrette. Like anytime I smell Ambrette, that's what I think of. And I th think that there is Ambrette in Muscio Oro. Uh, Muscio Oro literally means gold musk. And they had an another musk perfume and apparently that one is more animalic. And this one is not animalic. It's, it's that it is like a warm warm bodied clean musk and um i i there's a vegetal musk that i've seen listed in here and i believe that's ambrette and so ambrette is giving people that warm shower soapy scent there's not an overdose of ambrette so it's not like fleur de peau by diptyque or glossier you or chanel 1957 those are all ambrette heavy perfumes i wouldn't say that this is ambrette heavy at all all which is nice because that's not something that I was looking for um, you can tell I've worn those Ambrette perfumes a ton especially Glossier U I have like two bottles of it at this point um, but uh, uh, you know this is more florals and uh, there's Jasmine there's Ylang Ylang it opens up with like peach like I get a lot of peach and it kind of made me think of an old school Shepra like Mitsuko um, but I compared it to my sample of Mitsuko they're not alike it also opens with a lot of aldehydes and I think the aldehydes are quite peachy in this case and that's what's giving me a peach note it's not necessarily that there is something from a peach in here I think that it's the freshness of the aldehydes that's giving me fresh peach and that's quite lovely. I adore that. Uh, the other aldehydic perfume that is really well known is Chanel Number no. 5. So of course I did get out my bottle of Chanel Number no. 5 and I only have the Eau de Parfum. Um, quite different, sharper. This is a lot more ylang-ylang. Um, 
this is even more soapy and even more clean. It's also cold and Muscio Oro is really warm. I do prefer Muscio Oro side by side. I would say that I really like Muscio Oro a lot. I really love the dry down of it as well. And the dry down is still like a syrupy kind of almost amber dry down. There's no patchouli in it, but there is that musk paired with vanilla and tonka and um, yeah, it is almost like mouth watering because it just makes me think of like a golden syrup, like just a golden syrup, but not sugary. It's not gourmand. It's just a clean vanilla, I would say, and it's quite enjoyable. My favorite thing about musks of these kinds of musks is that they really do stick to your skin and they have excellent lasting power. Um, so even though this does turn into a bit of a skin scent because it is an eau de cologne, so it's not very concentrated, even though it turns into a skin scent, it does really stick to your clothes and your hair um, and your skin and it, that part lasts for a really, really long time and is very, very enjoyable. I could smell, I was wearing a dress the last time I sp sprayed this, and I could, I could smell like the dry down of this on there even a few weeks later. So that was really nice, I enjoy that a lot. As you can tell, I've gone through a bunch of it because I've already refilled this. Um, I think that this is perfect for any time of year. A lot of the times, you know, when people talk about Chanel Number no. 5 or Mitsuko or La Bleu or any of those really classic scents, they say that they are timeless and you can wear them any time of year, any weather. And this is the same. This is really a timeless scent profile. That's just so pretty and and wearable at any time. And yeah, I still get the same peaches. I still get the like the peachy aldehydes. I still get them when I spray this from the bottle, but I am keeping my bottle closed nice and tight and in the box and in my drawer of perfume so that it's away from the light and away from the heat and I'm protecting it because I really really do enjoy wearing it. I'm gonna wear it all through the summer and then um, just keep refilling my little sample spray but yeah it, this is really like a nice well-rounded um, aldehydic musky perfume. It's it's got a lot of body, it's got a lot of character. I don't think it's as boring as some of the other ones I've, or as Chanel number no. five at least, and definitely not as cold. I would love to compare it to Chanel number no. 22 because I hear that that is a dialed up version, but I don't have a sample of that, so I wasn't able to compare those side by side. Um, yeah, so really easy, pleasant wear. Is it soapy? I guess it is because other people will say that you smell like soap, um, which is fine because at the end of the day, you know, a soapy scent is a crowd pleaser of a smell and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's definitely better than the alternative when, you know, I've, I've smelled like civet and ambergris and lots of things that maybe aren't pleasant to other people, but I like on myself. Um, so I guess this is a nice scent. Um, I'm definitely going to be wearing it all summer long. Let me know if you've smelled it and what you think um, or tell me what your favorite is from this brand because I am really really interested in acquiring more bottles <laughs> and smelling more of their perfumes. I think I also like the fact that you really can't find them here very easily and um you know ordering them online is a nightmare it was like 35 dollars shipping so i i don't know i don't really recommend it but if you if you are near a place that has santa maria novella give this is give this a try i highly recommend it i have no regrets about buying this bottle i think i will treasure it for many 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 years 
not many decades. And um, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.